18 nesters, newly single, and those starting over age three, your healthy, happy, hip years are just beginning. The back phone is connected, so give me a buzz to chat today, 404-355-8699. Tell me what's going on in your life. I want to hear from you. And today in the studio, yay, I have Whitney Miller. Hey, Whitney. Hey, Steph. How are you? I'm good. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, too. I'm so glad you could make it here today. It's crazy traffic out there. It is. You know, Atlanta is just getting worse and worse. We are so full of people. Oh, well, of people. That's yeah. good. That's good. Uh, th that was a good one. That was a good comeback. Um, oh, well, you know, um, the theme of my show this year is Life on Life Terms, and um, I'm dedicating today's show to my dear BFF from high school, Jeff Fiorentino, because it's his birthday this weekend, and I can't be there, so that's okay, but uh, Jeff, you know, I love you. And today, uh, we're going to talk about love, life, yes. and getting it all going for the new year. I know, and I'm so excited. I, this is a perfect way to start the new year. Absolutely. Who wants, who, you want to start the new year in love? Yes. Right? I think everyone in 2017 is, is trying to find love, and we can help make that happen. Yay! Okay, well, we're going to talk about that, but first, awesome. um, you know, uh, I just got to talk about the NFL, because uh, we're all done with the, uh, with the college ball. Thank goodness. So, yay. Okay, <laughs> I guess so. It was kind of crazy. It really was. You know, I, you know Clemson, uh, really, I mean, that was crazy. That because was a crazy Alabama comeback. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. Was, I, I was actually watching it, I'm, you know. Uh, I was just sitting there. I was like, "Oh my gosh, I can't believe they they won!" Like, I think I fell asleep and I woke up and they Clemson won. I was like, "What? Oh my I know. gosh!" I know. Who would have thought? I know. So, um, okay. So this weekend we're in the um, divisional playoffs uh, for the NFL. The Falcons are playing the Seahawks. There, it's it's here at home, which I think one of my kids are, my kids are going. So uh, it's uh, four thirty five, and then this is Saturday, and then eight fifteen the Texans are at. My boyfriend Tom Brady. <laughs> Yay! And I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little gig at my house. Like you know, I have, actually have a friend in from Boston this weekend. So we're gonna we'll be watching. Uh, um, she better not say that he's her boyfriend because I'll kill her. But anyway, <laughs> no, she, yeah, that's my that's my boyfriend. And then Sunday we have um, at one o'clock is the Steelers are at the Chiefs and four forty is the Packers are at the Cowboys. So who do you like for Super Bowl? Oh, Watch goodness. what you say here, girl. <laughs> you know. I, I like to think that Tom Brady's my boyfriend, too, sometimes. Yeah, I know. So I'm going to be with you on that one. The Pats. Yeah, Patriots. Who do you think? I think it's, I'm, you know what would be really, I really want the Falcons to, to be in, in the Super Bowl. I mean, I that, really do. you know, that would be a ton on. of fun. Yeah. That would bring a ton of fun to Atlanta. Right. A lot more fun than we've had. Right. So that would be great. I, I, I think so. So I, I'm hoping for um, um, Patriots-Falcons. I really am, but uh, I don't know if that's going to happen, but I think that would be really fun. And I'm going to have a Super Bowl party, because if the Patriots are in, I'm doing a Super Bowl party. So, well, what if they're not in? You can still have a Super Bowl party. We could, we can throw down. I know, we could, <laughs> but you know what? It's a party in, it's a party in the year. I love it. Out. So, yeah. So, okay, what did you do this weekend? It was snow, were you snowed in? No. Oh, my gosh. So, I... I was really legitimately sad. I wanted some snow, and we got this little icing, and it was just, I mean, the ice on the trees and everything was really pretty, but I wanted some snow. Yeah. I wanted something to play with. I wanted to go out and build a snowman or something. There you go. Did you get? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you know what? I um, I, I stayed in. Actually, I didn't feel good on sa Saturday. I had like a little oh, no. bug or something. It was weird. Well, I think that's happening a lot because we're going from like 30 degree weather to 65, 65 yeah. and nobody knows what to do with it. So I, I, I was like, I pretty much, and I never do this, I was like on the couch all day. Oh, no. You know, and I actually went back to bed and took a nap. I didn't feel good. Yeah. But we, my mom and I watched movies all weekend. That's a good weekend. So that's what we yeah. did. We, you know, I think we had like lean cuisine and vodka. Nice. <laughs> well, I will say Saturday, um, one of my girlfriends was in town. She moved to Louisville, and I'm from Kentucky, so, okay. so I'm familiar well, with that it sounds area. Like you say it right. Yeah, yeah. So it's oh, Paul Oliva. Did you hear that? So my friend Paul's from. Uh, oh, you know Paul. Oh yeah, nice. I love Paul. Yeah. He's such a great guy. Who doesn't love Paul? Yeah. So we we all went to Bar Taco to celebrate her being in town, and um, there was like nobody out on the roads, but it was great because we had the place pretty much to ourselves, which is nice. Yeah. Yeah. There was, was a few places that were open. I was getting emails from like New York Prime and stuff, and they were everybody oh, yeah. was you know the, a lot of the places were open. Whiskey Mistress was open. So yeah, and it's always fun. it's always fun when you do that with your friends and nobody's right, out and you're right. just out with a couple of people. It's really nice. Yeah. But no, I stayed in so because I, I really I really wasn't feeling good and I actually cooked on Sunday for my kids 
and then we watched football and stuff like that so that that was fun so you know i wanted to talk a little bit about usually in my first segment i'd like to talk either about physical or emotional well being and sometimes i like to bring in friendships and so i want to tie it into what you do okay and so i sort of posed this question out on facebook and it's can men and women truly be just friends without that sexual tension and i want to hear what you have to say about that okay so you have to define your boundaries is kind of where i'll start with that i have a lot of really good guy friends and i think that if you define your boundaries and and where you stand with things then it's a lot easier for you to be friends with someone from the opposite sex right um it's it's a balance it really is you have to have that um you have to have that conversation sometimes i mean it is it is something where a lot of times you will have that connection after a certain amount of time because you know you spend a lot of time with that person so maybe you'll eventually become attracted but like i said if you set up those boundaries if you have that conversation i don't see anything wrong with it i right. i mean i have strictly platonic friendships in right my life, so i do too and uh i i do as well However, I think your answer, as does mine, falls into the maybe category because cause I'm saying yes, no, maybe. I'm right. sort of making it a little bit black and white there because right. uh, we have to for in terms of numbers. So, I, so for what we've done, what the answers that we've gotten back, 64% of the answers came back yes, you can be friends. Five mm-hmm. percent uh, said no. And thirty one percent said maybe, and we sort of fall in that maybe as long right. as you as long as these criteria are met, right. yes, you can. I have great um, guy friends, and I, I love them dearly, and I, I love their um, their viewpoint, and uh, and I love the fact that uh, I can hang out and not worry about anything. exactly. So exactly, so that's nice. Uh, and but uh, you know, so I had a bunch of really uh, great answers on that, but. Uh, you know, like um, Anita says, yes, I have tons of platonic male friends. However, I don't make, I, I don't, I, I don't know what, I can't understand what she said here. Um, and Barton says, only after 20 years of marriage. I don't know what that means. Uh. Um, uh, Keith says, yes, but we would rather have benefits too. Oh nice. my gosh, Keith. Nice. Keith. What, nice. What's wrong what with you? you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Was it ten lashes with the wet, wet noodle? Yeah. I know. We we need to smack some sense into that guy. Uh, Gary from um, I, I don't know if he's still in Medford, but he's from Medford. I know he's from Medford. No, that's that's out in Massachusetts. No way, just can't happen. Anyone who thinks otherwise are just fooling themselves. So you know, there's a lot of different opinions out there. I've got yeah. a lot. Like, look at I've got a lot. Oh of, my gosh! You know, yeah, you have you have tons of responses yes, over there. Yes. Um, you know. Uh, I got a funny answer this morning, but I, I don't. I can't repeat it on air. Oh goodness! So, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble. So uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about in terms of friendships is um, we always, you always have this friend in your life that is either dating or maybe going through a breakup. How can friends support one another uh, through this whole dating process? So I saw something recently that struck a chord with me. It was, it was something along the lines of. You know, when you're a good friend, you keep listening and you tell your friend it's crap, but you keep listening anyways. Right. Because you have to have that that safety zone to be able to get out what you're feeling and to get out your thoughts about something and just have somebody listen and, and give kind of an outsider's perspective. Um, friends can be that support system. Right. Because you don't want to be talking to everybody about what's going on in a relationship. Right. Um, or the lack thereof, right. uh, I should say. Um so it's good to have that person that you can you can talk to and you know they're not going to judge you and you know they're not going to give you um, unsolicited advice that's just not a good a good route to follow if that makes sense. Right, and you know I, I mean I had a girl, my girl one I have about four or five very close girlfriends that I can let my hair down with and I had a you know a very upsetting breakup back in May. Okay, and those those friendships. And my mom got me through a very difficult time. Right. You know, I was able to just talk about it and talk about it. And I was mad about it because I didn't want right. to do it. I didn't want to be the one that need, that was needy. I always want to be the one that people come to. Right. But I was. I was I was very needy. And they were there for me. And, you know, and sometimes they would say, they would be real with me. Like, okay, you know, you know, you got to, you got to move on. Or, right. okay, he's not there. Blah, blah, blah. Whatever it was that they said that was real. 
or if i you know i was i was in the back trying to get back in the dating scene and i had one of my close girlfriend said to me ok stop hitching your wagon to i'm going to say dummies but that really wasn't one yeah so i'm being nice right and so i'm like she nice yeah yeah so you know i mean right yeah exactly and it's one of those things that if you don't get out everything that you're thinking or everything that you're feeling it's just going to keep you know festering inside you so you have to have those people that you can like you said let your hair down with that you can be real with and that are going to tell you you know he's not worth it he's not worth your time just move on you're so much better than that but at the same time they're still listening to what you need to get right out. right i mean it's it's always good to hear you know this the way i see it is in relationships everybody ha- does their part so right. whatever happens whatever the breakup is you have your part in it and so it's good to hear that you know you gave it all you had right you know however maybe you lost yourself or maybe right. you did this or maybe whatever maybe you you know and i i mean that's my biggest problem in relationships is i give 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 you know and then i but then i start to lose myself right. because i'm not taking care of me exactly i'm the same way we we're nurturers we want right. to take care of someone we want to show them all the love that we can because we like them we care right. about them but it is that it's it's that that balance that you have to have those boundaries that you have to set where you don't lose yourself where right. you are like you know i'm giving everything that i can but if i'm not getting equal amount back or if i'm not getting enough to fill my cup up then maybe it's time to move on right and so having a good girlfriend or or a guy friend that says hey you know this is you know you're not you're not being who you are right you're not you're, you're not doing you know you're allowing this or whatever and it's kind of good it's could be a nice wake up so to have that friendship there is really great yeah. uh, i was telling you i you know i said i was dedicating to my my show to my friend jeff and uh, over thanksgiving i i was meeting them at uh, we have a friend in boston that has um, a bar and we went i was meeting my high school friends there and he and i was bringing somebody there a date and he said to me you're bringing somebody here. I go, "Don't worry, he can hang." You know, he can hang. Right. And when we found out this date that I brought had a lot of our mutual friends, when that date went to the bathroom, he got on the phone and started making phone calls. Oh, and when, before he came back, he said, "He's a good guy." Uh, yeah. I mean, and, you know, and that's that's ultimate test. And, and he would have said, "Dump him." Yeah. Get rid of him. Yeah. I, in a second, cuz these are my these are my friends from from my life. From way back. Yeah. 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 So, um, you know, it's always good to, and he would he would have. Yeah. And it, and he has been very real with me in terms of um the dating world. Right. You know, okay, move on. Let's go. It's good to have friends like that. Yeah. It really is. So, it's a little bit of tough love. Yes. But you have to have it you know, from time to time. So, it it's it's you know, it's great. So, we, you know, what I, I want to move into actually getting into relationships and what a matchmaker does. So, right. we have dating advice for second lifers and the just Jeff rules of dating. Yeah. All right. So, um, you know, I I wanted what? Why would I come to a matchmaker as opposed to just getting on Match.com or Tinder? What? So that is, that's an excellent question and one that I get on a regular, regular basis. So here's one of the things that I will say. Online dating is a lot different than app dating. So those, those are two different things. Okay, can you, can you yes. explain it? So, so app dating is, it's a lot more, it, it's a lot more of a, a quick fix. It's like, you know, you can find someone at the drop of a hat within a certain mile range and you don't get too much information. So we're talking like happen. Bumble, right. Tinder, right. Zusk, no. You know, I think that's one. I don't know. Whatever. Hinge is one. There, oh, there's a lot of different little ones. Okay, but, but the, but the most say, popular yeah, would be Bumble t- and Tinder. Yeah. Bumble, Tinder, and even Happen has if you drove by. Right. Yes, and that can be a little creepy sometimes. That is weird. Yes, it's 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 a little creepy sometimes. I'm I'm personally not on any of the online dating or any of the app dating right now. I haven't been for several months, but that, that's neither here nor there. But one of the big things is if you have a lot of free time on your hands and you're not really expecting anything, those are great. 
they're great. I mean, you can go out and you can meet people, you can make new friends. I, I used to use the apps and I made a lot of great friends. I didn't make any really um, good relationship connection right. as far as, you know, a love connection, but it can happen. There is a small percentage of people who do actually find someone they can date from those apps, but you have to put a lot of yeah, exactly. Call me maybe. Call me maybe. <laughs> yeah. So, but, okay, so what's the difference between online and, and the app? So, the apps... Maybe you'll get in there. I'm yeah, sorry. The apps, the apps are a little bit more accessible. You can do that on the go. You can do that wherever you are. Whereas online, you're typically, you're at home, you're at, you know, the, in the comfort of your own home, in your own comfy chair, looking online and... So, you're, and that's like match. Your, right, match. harmony Exactly. And you have a lot more information at your disposal than you do with the apps. Right. So the apps is like, I would say, the the num- the lowest step. And then you've got your online dating and then potentially a matchmaker. A matchmaker is like the person you have in your corner that's vetting people, that's making sure, at least with us, with our company, we vet people and we make sure that we're setting you up with people you could legitimately fall in love with based off the criteria you're looking for, based off of the personality. It's not just an algorithm that a website comes up with. Mm -hmm. It's not just someone that's within a five-mile radius of you. Uh, It's not someone that just looks really hot in their their profile picture or in a couple pictures that they have on their Tinder app. It's, It's based off of a lot more than that. It's based off of someone that you could actually fall in love with and have your happy ever after with. So it really depends on where you are and how quickly you want to find someone and how serious you are about the process. So what I'm hearing is it's a much more personalized approach. Exactly. Where you actually get to know the person that has hired you. Exactly. And do you pull their potential dates from your pool of people or do you go out and look for somebody? Both. So to answer that question, Mm. let me get a little bit into that. So when someone is interested in potentially hiring us as their matchmaker, they come in and we do an in-depth interview. The interview itself takes about an hour and a half to two hours. So I ask all kinds of different questions. We get really deep into finding out what it is that you want, what it is that you like, what it is that you need, what happened in past relationships that didn't work, and your quirks and everything like that. So we really get to know you as a person and what you're looking for. Um, on top of that, you actually leave the interview with a small homework assignment. Don't worry, it's not like going back to college or high school or whatever like that. It's something that keeps your brain working on, on thinking about what it is that you want versus what it is that you actually need. Right. What is it that's going to make that relationship work? What, did it, what, what is it that's going to make you happy for the rest of your life, essentially? So after we do the interview, after we get the homework assignment back and everything, we will go through our other clients and see if we have someone to potentially match you up with based off of your criteria, your personality, Mm -hmm. and and our intuitive notion of seeing, you know what, those two people would be really good together. Um, If we don't have another client, we'll go through our database of anyone we have potentially interviewed. So that's a huge thing. Even if you can't hire us to be your matchmaker, you should definitely go through our interview because people have a proactive get a proactive approach to, to going back out and dating. You get different tips and things like that during the interview as well to make you a better dater. Um, and actually, too, right now, up until Valentine's Day, our interview is normally three fifty, but right now it's going to be two fifty until Valentine's Day. So if you're out there and you're interested, definitely give us a call. Um, but that's, that's the very first step. And we're very selective. We don't take everyone. So just because you could pay us doesn't mean we'll take you. We want the people that are legitimately in it for the right reasons, that are looking for a long-term relationship or marriage, and and that's what we do. So to get back to the process, if we don't have someone that is a client or someone that's in our database that we know, we will reach out to our extensive network of contacts. We've actually been contacted by eight other matchmakers throughout the U.S. and one in London to help set up their challenging clients. So we can also pull from their databases. So another huge question is, would you be willing to move or why? What's it worth to you? Boston. Right? Yeah, <laughs> Boston girl over here. So so that would be something great to consider. Speaking of which, I do have a client that I want to talk to you about a little bit later. Oh, yes, yes, yes. That's funny. Um, <laughs> so anyways, um, but getting back to that, 
if we don't have someone that we know or that's in our network, I, I hit the streets. We hit the streets and we go meet people. I am a, I'm, I would say the epitome of a super networker. I go out, I meet people, I make friends. I love people. So right. I create those connections. What's your sign? I'm a Virgo. Wow, God, see, I'm Scorpio, but I have a lot of that. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I can talk to a wall, and eventually the wall will talk back. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if that. <laughs> I don't know if that's right. That <laughs> a virgin, a Virgo. Yeah. I'll just go with it. You yeah. know, it's Madonna. It's Madonna. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, it started. So <laughs> it started off right, at least. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I I am constantly meeting new people and trying to make new connections. And um, I, I really, I love what I do. And it shows in what I, it shows in, in how I set people up and how important they are to me. When I work with somebody as their matchmaker, our relationship is the, is the key. I mean, we have to have a good partnership to be able to work together. So that's a huge thing too. And right. that's also why we're very selective and exclusive on who we take as our clientele. What is your high, what age group is your highest percentage of? Uh, clients. So our our range of demographics is anywhere from typically 28 to 54. I would say the majority of the people that we have are somewhere in their 30s. Right. Um, that is a huge a huge demographic. We have a lot of um, people who've been very successful in their work business life, and they're getting to this point where now yep. they want to settle down. Right. They want to find someone to spend their life with. They want to, you know. Maybe not necessarily get married tomorrow and, and have right. some kids tomorrow. Right. But maybe they want to find someone to, you know, see if that could happen with. Right. To, you know, see, let's go on some vacations together. Let's do some things before we settle down and get married, before we have kids. And let's make a life of this. Right. So. Right. And so, uh, what if, well, specifically my demographic, what I coined second lifers. Right. And we're, you know, empty nesters, newly single, and those starting over. So uh, a lot of us are either divorced or, you know, unfortunately have lost a partner to illness or whatever. So, um, or maybe have never gotten married. Right. And so, uh, you know, we, you know, what would you say, do you, can you off the top of your head think of uh, specific issues that second lifers might have or what would be some good advice for second lifers? Right. So one of the things that I would say in dealing with people that are second lifers, so to say, um, you have to be open-minded because a lot of people are stuck in their own ways. Mm -hmm. When you get to a certain point in your life, you, I mean, as we age, hopefully, if it, if it goes the right way, you do learn a lot more about life and a lot more about yourself and what you want and what you don't want. Right. Um, but the thing about it is, is the perfect person for you may not meet all of the criteria you have in your head. They may not look like you think they're going to look. Right. Um, they may not have the job you think they're going to have. So you have to be open-minded because you can fall in love with someone that you would have never thought about, but it's based off the personality. So you have to have both. You have to you have to be open-minded and, and, and just be open to getting to know someone. Be open to, to going on a date is what I would right. say. Um, I actually have a client right now, and he's in his 50s. He's actually never been married. He is a fantastic guy. He is, he's a fantastic guy. He's been focused on his career, and he had a couple relationships that were long-term, but for one reason or another, they just didn't work out. And my thing with him right now is, is getting him to that point where he is more open-minded because he's got this closed, confined set of criteria that he's looking mm -hmm. for. And I find him that, but for one reason or another, he says no. And I, I think that he needs to be more open. He needs to meet these people right. to see if something could happen. Because the worst thing you could do is say no. I mean, what are you missing out on? That's, right. that's my question. It's what one are you, night. What are you miss out it's on? one day. Right. It, could be, it might be an hour. One, yeah, exactly. One day, one hour of your life spent out with someone right. where you could make a friendship instead of sitting at home on the couch, you know? Right. I mean, I, I definitely think you have to, you know, when I was on the dating, I'm not on the dating apps anymore, but when I was doing that and I was dating, you know, I pretty much went with an open mind saying, right. you never know, this could be it. Right. This could be Mr. Forever. Well, and, and one of the it things... was, but... <laughs> <laughs> one of the things that we say with our business is you have to have an open heart, an open mind, and open to love. Right. So, well, that's the key there. Now, here's that, okay, that open to love okay. is really, I think we, 
you know my whole thing is we all come to the table as cracked eggs we're all broken in some way and so i think in especially for second life birth if we've been hurt by losing somebody either to either to illness or divorce right there this pain associated with that and then and our our heart has muscle memory right you know it really does and so it's hard to uh it's hard to let that let some of that go and not as my friend susan says paint them with the same brush right and we never want to make light of a heartbreak um one thing that i will say is that every love is different every time you meet someone and you have a love connection with them it feels different it, it fills a different part of your heart um so although you might have a small hole from what was left from a past relationship you have to fill that in with with self-love and making yourself happy and surrounding yourself by people that you love like your friends your family right. things like that Absolutely. to kind of fill that void that is there from a past relationship but you also have to be open to maybe filling your heart with someone else that that could be a new love connection all right we're going to take a quick break okay. and when we come back i want to talk to you about and i'm saying this so i remind myself okay uh, i want to talk about you know self-esteem in self second life first um, for women especially. Right. And uh, and talk about the great love debate. Sounds so awesome. So take a risk, be vulnerable, share your heart and love always when we come back more of Whitney Miller and Heartbeat Matchmakers. This one is for the birthday peeps, Stephanie Payne, Douglas Cameron, and Chris Domino. Happy birthday, guys. And it's the fight. I love this song. Love it. It's my new song. I'm going to do karaoke to this. Um, all right, so now we're still on here. Okay. How fun! Yeah, and so let's see who's who's let's see who's who's uh who's here. Oh, I can't even see that far away. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Vanessa. Hi. Hi, Carl. Hey, friend. Happy New Year. Hi, Betty Ann. That's Kristen. Uh, hi, guys. Hi, Dia. Hi. Who's that? Diane. Diane. Hi, Diane. Hi, uh, Vanessa. That's oh, I love it. Nurturer. She's a nurturer. Hi, Bobby. How are you, honey? Are you still at Echo? Uh, Jill Brandon. Hi, Jill. John Hyatt. Hi, oh, John. Oh, hey, John. We love and you. And Patricia, hi. And jo John says, love to both of you, Steph and Whitney. He's so great. On to go heartbeat matchmaker. Yes. 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 Woohoo! And Gina. Hi, Gina. Uh, you know Gina McDonald. Yes. And uh, hi, Shirley. Hi, Jeff. Paul. <laughs> Paul. Oh, Paul. We hey, were Paul. talking about you. Were your ears buzzing, baby? So, yeah, so that's everybody. Oh, I love it. Yeah, so it's I fun. I love it, I love it. So. I have, you know, I have not done the Facebook Live thing yet. Oh, you need I, to. I need to. I do, I need to. It's just, so easy. I've just started doing more on this whole Snapchat thing. I'm, oh, I'm, forget I'm, it. I'm stupid on that. <laughs> I, I, I'm learning. I, I, you know, I'm in my 20s. I should know about all of this stuff, but I don't. <laughs> what I wouldn't give to be in my 20s again. <laughs> but knowing what I know now. <laughs> I don't want to go back there. So I am here with just Steph. We're having a great hey, time hi. on the radio. Yay! And see, the videos don't even last that long. So, hmm. Maybe I, I need to try this Facebook fun. Live thing. Yeah. Let's do this. Let's let's find this Facebook Live thing. Okay. Okay, we got one minute. Okay. Get to. Okay. Oh, he's on the road. Paul's on the road. Oh. Okay, babe. Be safe, Paul. No, no Facebooking and driving. To the next, I wanna love, wanna give you all my heart. What if I fall? I won't let you fall. What if I cry? And if I get sick, we are on air. Get to you, baby. I'll be the fighter. What yes. if I fall? I won't let you fall. What if We're about I to go fall? back live. That's right. Great song. So good. It's Keith Urban. He did a little karaoke with uh, Nicole Kidman with this. So it's cute. so funny. <laughs> I love it. All right, we're back. That was my new favorite song. We're back with uh, Whitney Miller from Heartbeat Matchmaker. Hey, hey, everybody. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about self esteem. Now, I can tell you with me, um, I always struggle. I struggled because you know I was married for 24 years, but I was also with him for like five before that. Okay. So it was like you know I, since I was 19, and um, and so I have Poland syndrome, 
you know, and so I always have struggled with my own self-esteem. Now I'm feeling much better on my own skin thanks to lots of therapy and, uh, and working things out within myself and having great people that surround me. But, you know, I, um, you know, I have my own self, I had my own self-esteem issues right. and, and dealing with that. And so what about, what would you say to somebody? Because it's not, I have Pollen syndrome and you can see that. But there, everybody has something, right? Whether they can see it or not. Well, everybody comes comes into any relationship with their their own quirks, their own sort of. I don't want necessarily want to say baggage, but right. you've got your own stuff, right. is what I want to say. Right. You have to be comfortable not only in your own skin, but with your personality. You are made the way that you are for a reason. Right. We do we do self betterment classes. We do relationship coaching. And a lot of our business is in that arena because we want people to feel the best in their own skin. Right. You have a lot to bring to the table, so let's 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 dial let's let's dial it back a little bit and let's find out what your what makes you you. What are your quirks? What are your your whatever your imperfections? Your perfections that make you who you are and make you equally as lovable as somebody else. Right. It's so funny because I did a video on who deserves to sit at my table nice. because I, after my own self-assessment, after that last breakup, I said, what did I do? What do I have to do? And I said, okay, I bring a lot to the table. Yes, you do. You know, I bring a lot. I mean, a lot. And so whoever sits at that table with me has to belong there. Right. And so I have four criteria to sit at my table. All right. Let's hear it. Okay, now I have to try and remember. I have to dig. Uh, oh my God, I'm having a senior moment. I'm putting you okay, on the spot. Okay. You have to, yeah, you, you, you have to, um, you have to, you, you have to be able to deserve to sit at my, like in other words, do you belong at my table in the sense that, you know, do you fit my criteria? Like, do you have a job? Okay. You know, That's do understandable. you, you know, do you have a good sense of humor? Okay. Like all the things that I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. And then, um, oh, what was the other one? Um, I can't remember. Kristen, help me. Are you legally? Oh, that was the last the one. The last one. Okay. That was We're the last one. Oh no! Um, it was, Wait, um, what is this? Who did? It's like, do you, do you want to? Yeah, do you want to sit at my table? Okay. Like, do you want to okay. be there? That was number three, actually. Do you want to sit there? Like, or, okay, do you want to be at my table, or do you want to be at everybody's table? Because if you want to be at everybody's table, you can't be at my table. Right. And um, oh, do you know that it's an honor yes. to sit at my table? Do you know right. what what you've gotten me? Well, here's the thing: time is the commodity that nobody can get back. Right. And that is something that. You have to you have to be greedy with your time. Right. Is is someone treating you with respect? Right. Is someone treating you like you're a human being? You're a real person with real feelings. So treat me as such. Right. And the last one was are you free to sit at my table? Like are you tied up with emotionally or right. legally with somebody else? Okay. You know, I mean and and a lot of it's emotionally, you know, because they're you know, they're with somebody else or even it, it may not even be another person. It could be life circumstances. It could be, yeah. That they're tied up with that they really need to get through exactly. before they are free to love somebody. Exactly. And what I will say is I feel like a lot of people these days, they have a lot of life stuff going on. Right. And I feel like everybody needs to be talking to someone, whoever that may be, whether it's a therapist, a relationship coach, a life coach, somebody that's helping them work through whatever issues that it is that they have that, that goes in day in, day out. Right. One of our things is not only doing the relationship coaching and getting people, you know, more comfortable in their own skin or, or ready to date, but we do divorce to dating. We help married people, couples. I mean, we help everybody who, who needs to talk about something and get it out there and get some advice that that's kind of, you know, out of their out of their situation. So what what do you see as the average time after a divorce that somebody should really jump into a relationship? I would say probably a couple of years. Really? You, you, it, I mean, it depends on where you are. I mean, if your marriage was done long ago, right. then that's a different situation. But if it's something where it was completely off guard, if someone cheated or if someone really hurt you, you have to fill those spots back up with right. positivity in well, your life. You go through the five stages of grief. You do, no matter I mean, what. Exactly, and that's that's with anything. You have to acknowledge where you are. You need someone to meet you where you are, whether that's a therapist, a relationship coach, a counselor, whatever the case may right. be, a spiritual, um, 
Yeah, you know, like God, you're at, your, at your church exactly. or a synagogue or wherever exactly. you go, if exactly. you have, if you believe that or whatever. Exactly. So yeah, I I, I definitely agree with that. I'm I'm a therapy junkie anyway. You, so. you have to fill your cup back up. I've been in therapy for like out. I've been in therapy therapy for like 17 years. I feel like people think that's a bad word, but uh, it really isn't. I mean, if you are taking that step to become a better you, to be your best self, nobody can say that that's that's a negative. Like people. I, I well, there is like, there's like a little stigma still attached, like oh, you're yeah. crazy. I know, but it's getting better. It, it is. It's getting it is. better. It, it definitely better. is. Well, I'll tell you what. I mean, this is the reason why I stay in therapy because I, I I'm 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 pretty stable. I'm I'm good. Mm -hmm. I'm good. You look great. You seem Thank great. You. Thank that you. That smile. I, yeah. You can tell by that smile. Thank you. Well, I I actually feel great. Good. But here's the reason why I stay in therapy. You know, with my marriage, and I. And with what everything that I've dealt with in my life between, sorry, the Poen syndrome and, you know, being raised by crazy Sicilians, um, you know, I, my track record isn't so great. And so my, the reason why I stay in therapy, and I, I go like once every three weeks or something like okay. that, is because I want right relationships. I want healthy relationships, whether it's with my kids, mm -hmm. my mom, my friends, my coworkers boyfriends, potential boyfriends, potential potential husband, whatever. Right. I want healthy relationships. And if I bring all of this into a therapist, we I can work through exactly. whatever's going on in my world. Exactly. That's the only reason why I'm in therapy. Because I want healthy relationships right. all across the board. I want to be a good friend. I want to be a good sister. I want to be a good mom. I want to be a good lover, girlfriend, mm -hmm. whatever, it, whatever it is. And a Daughter. Lot of, yeah, exactly. And a lot Me. of that comes with setting boundaries for yourself and setting boundaries with each of those different relationships and how much you're going to give versus how much you're going to receive and you know having that mutual respect you have to have that mutual respect the moment that someone doesn't show you respect you should walk away the, the I mean first off you should stand up for yourself and you should right. be like this is what I deserve and if this is not what you're able to give me, give me back then I, I can't have this, whatever this is, with you. Right. Because my time is precious. I I have feelings, too. And it's not all about you. Right. And that's a huge thing. So, you know, it is all about you as, as your person. Right. So you have to fill your cup up. You have to be happy first. And if someone is making you feel any less than that, if they're making you question, you know, what they, what they feel about you or, oh, my gosh, you know, I don't like the way he said that to me. I don't. I don't like the way she made me feel. That that's a time to reevaluate where you stand and, with that relationship. Well, and here's the deal. You know, we. Have, I don't know if you've read the Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz, but one of them is, uh, well, it's be impeccable with your word. Mm -hmm. um, never make, never make assumptions. I think more, al always do your best, and um, I don't know. There's one more, but whatever the case is, is uh, you know, have don't assume anything. Right. You, have the courage to say, what did you mean by that? Right. Communication is huge. I feel like, you know, wh where did the time go when people actually called people on the phone to talk to them? I mean, some people still do. I actually, for one, do do like to hear someone's voice right. on the phone. And for your age group, the age, it's, that's it's, big. I know. It's, it's, I like I'm, it. I'm, I'm, I'm old school that You're, way. You have I an want, old soul, maybe. Yes. I want to call people and hear the emotion in their voice. Exactly. It, it makes everything so different. The thing about it is... And we have rules and regulations with, with our matchmaking business. And one of those is you can't be on social media together because pictures can be misread a thousand different ways. You can't be texting each other until you're in a committed relationship or at least until you're dating, quote unquote. Really? Because texts can be misread and misinterpreted because if I don't know you, I don't know where you're coming from with what you're saying to me. You could be saying it, you know, funny, kind of quirky, or you could be like totally serious. If you don't have an ex exclamation point at the end of that are you really happy oh he didn't put a smiley face in there is he really happy to see me does he you know it gets it, you a little can, crazy exactly so the social media the pictures text messaging the words things can be misread a thousand different ways so if you don't actually have that one-on-one -on -one time to communicate right then you don't really know so people need to communicate and that's that's a huge thing i i would you love like facetime i love facetime I love I'm FaceTime. FaceTime and every night. I love FaceTime. I don't FaceTime enough, actually. I would love to FaceTime more, but that is because that's fun. Exactly. You and you can talk. See, you can see. You can see yeah. the face, and you can yeah, laugh and stuff. Exactly. You, if you talk, I'm on, like, what are you doing? If you talk on the phone, <laughs> if you FaceTime, if you meet somebody in person, 
you can figure out every question that right. you have right away versus having to go through a text message in conversation and try for four hours and try and then you're assuming exactly right exactly so what I like about being on the phone with somebody a lot is that you hear if there's inconsistencies yes. and you can you, you talk about a lot of things and you talk about what's going on in your life and you know, and you can get a good feel for where they're at in their family life. Because mm -hmm. you want to know. I mean, if they've got kids, you want to know how they deal with the kids. Yes. Because if they're a, you know, good dad or a good mom or, you know, you want to know, are they, are they estranged from their family? That, for me, as an Italian, oh, that's huge. it's a big red flag. Oh, yeah. If they're estranged from their family. Family's huge. That's a huge red flag and for that's, me. That's even, I, I mean... My family is is a, is my number one. Right. If I, I wouldn't know what to do without my family. Right. And so for somebody to not be close with their family or to have like a weird or not a good relationship with them, that is a huge red flag because I, I love my family. I would love for you to love your family too. I'd love for us to be one big family. Yes. You know, exactly. that's, that's a big goal. I love that. Yeah. You know, and friends. How exactly. do you, you know, you want, I mean, you want your friends, you, you want to be able to like their friends and have their friends like you. Right. And even though it doesn't have to be the number one, you want to be able to hang out together. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that's something, too. I feel like a lot of people, once they start to like someone or get interested in someone, they forget about their friends. And that's a huge thing. You have to have those boundaries, too, because when you start to like someone or when you start to date someone, you still need to make time for yourself and for your friends right. separately. Because the worst thing that you can do is be all wrapped up in that person and lose sight of, of what else is really important. Because right. then if the relationship doesn't work out, where are you? Oh, you just forgot about your friends for two years. Right. Absolutely. And you definitely need your friends. And yes. I love to, I love, I'm, I'm like one of those people that gathers people in. Oh, I may mean, yes. have people at my house and, you know what I mean? I love that. I love to, you know, and I love to cook and all that. And even when I go up to Boston, I've cooked, you know, and we've had friends over. Right. So, I mean, I love that, yeah. you know, and just and, and just hang out and have some wine and, and talk and, and laugh. So, I'm, I love I'm, that. I love that, too. I'm the same way. I'm a big connector. Like, if, if this group of friends doesn't know this group of friends, I'm always introducing people, Bring bringing all people in. together. I mean, my birthday was in September, and I had probably 40-something people there. And not all of them were close, close friends, but I felt incredibly blessed by everyone who did right. come. and seeing all of the different groups of friends that didn't even know each other. And I brought them all together. I mean, how awesome is that? That is fun. I love that. All right, so we're going to take another break. And when we come back, Living Atlanta, this one is for April Crawford, Paul Joseph, and John Davison. Thanks for liking my Just Step and Living Atlanta pages. Love you like a love song. I got this from the Stack Man. <laughs> love this song. <laughs> um that's interesting about the texting. Yeah. You know, it's so funny because, um, you know, I don't, I, I haven't been doing too much texting lately. Mm -hmm. It's always on the phone. Mm -hmm. I'll text and then he also calls, he calls me all the time. <laughs> hey, so that's we'll a good thing. Yeah. Someone who takes, a, a man who takes the initiative to call you on the phone and talk to you, even if it's for a couple minutes. That's yeah. That's huge. That's huge. I love talking on the phone. I, I mean, all right, it. I don't love talking on the phone in general, but when I'm right. not in the dating, because I don't exactly. have time exactly. to be on the phone like 24-7 with my girlfriends, unless I'm driving in the car. Right, exactly. But exactly. when it comes to the whole dating scene, I really like the phone because you really get to know somebody. Exactly. You get to, hear, like I said, you get to hear the emotion in their voice. Right. You can hear and you can sense and feel any hesitation or any, like, any doubt in their voice just by the inflection and the way that they say something right. or their long pauses. I mean, you can tell so much about somebody right. in five minutes on the phone. And, you know, the funny thing is, is back in the day, my mother used to say, get off the phone because you would have more inter personal interaction. Right. We had people that would just drop by the that house. That would come over, yeah. You know, and now I'm like, I want people, like my friend Susan came over last night for dinner. I, I invite her like well, at least once a week. I love Oh, that. she's invited 24-7. I love it. But I was like, come on over. And like, you know, we just hang out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I cook dinner for the kids and everything. And then she and I will just sit and talk on the couch. And who does that? That's, that's amazing. Nobody does that. That's amazing. Because, but that's like my whole Sicilian Italian way. Like we invite people in. And we, you know. I'm not Sicilian or Italian. Obviously, you can pretty much tell by the way yeah. that I look. 
But I'm the same way. I love I love having people over. I can just I could sit on the opposite end of the couch with someone, but just having you there is just it yeah. makes you feel better. Yeah, and just chat and you just really um, we got one minute. Okay. And we're back. And we're gonna do Living Atlanta okay. and I'm gonna ask you what you're doing this weekend. Awesome. And I'm gonna say what I'm doing and then um, I'm just gonna talk about a few things that are going on. We're gonna talk about a few things that are going on for the mm -hmm. weekend and then okay. if you have any events I think before we get going, I'm, I'm going to ask you um, if you have any upcoming events and how to get in touch with you. Okay. Because I forgot. I forgot. Okay, we're back, and uh, before I get into um, Living Atlanta, uh, Whitney, how can people get in touch with you? Okay, so you can find us on Facebook, Heartbeat Matchmaker, Twitter, Heartbeat Match, Instagram, Heartbeat Matchmaker. Call us, 404-536-1046. I've got a blog, Whitney Says. You can follow all the dating information and our website, Heartbeat Matchmaker. Give us a call. We've got that promotion for the interview. It's normally $350, but right now, up until Valentine's Day, it's $250. We can meet you wherever you are. Okay, and just in case you missed all that, just private message me on Facebook, yes. and I will get you in touch with Whitney. How's mm -hmm. that? That sounds great. And, and then, then we also have the Great Love Debate coming yeah. up. Oh, yeah, that's right. January, we can talk about that. January, January 26. 26, the Great Love Debate. Whitney and I and John Hyatt will be yes. sitting on a panel discussing the question, why is everybody still single? Yes, and it's in the Punchline Comedy right. Club Inside Landmark Diner right in Buckhead. So it's super easy to get right. to. Thursday night, 8 o'clock. Get your tickets um, early, though. And yes. it's on Facebook, The Great Love Debate. It is So on you Facebook. have to get your tickets before... Before the, the, before the, the day of. Right. Let's go ahead and be proactive yeah. here in 2017, yeah. and let's buy our tickets ahead of time. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. Okay, so you wanted to know where to go this weekend, and you've been waiting for Living Atlanta. Okay, all right, so remember, when you go out, drink responsibly, drive responsibly, call designated driver, Uber, Lyft, a cab, a friend, leave your car at the valet, do not drink and drive. You know, I want, I want you here next week, and I love you all, that's why. All right, so what are you doing this weekend? Okay, so let's see. This weekend, I am actually going out with one of my great girlfriends that actually works from Jezebel Magazine. Oh, fun. She's awesome. Her name's Lacey. Shout out to you, Lacey. I love you. Um, so we're going to dinner. I think we'll probably go in um, maybe Barcelona Westside. Oh, I love, love it. Love, love that area. Yeah. Um, you know, some other people, actually last weekend we were talking about, we went to the Warren to, to have a little uh -huh. dance party. Right. I don't know if I've we'll have there. a dance party this weekend, but I'm hoping so, because I do. I think they do it every week. I like to tear up the dance floor. The so. Warren Club is at, in the Highlands on, on top of Dock Horse. Yes, it's, it's a ton of fun if you ever want to do something out of the box. It's, right. It's a super fun place to go. Um, love, love Bar Taco. Love uh -huh. that place. You can, I could go there all the time. Yay. Um, but I, you know, I don't have like super set plans. Right. I'm, I'm pretty open. Now, I will say though, I am going on a date tonight. Yay! And we're going to Top Golf. Love, love, love. That's fun. Okay. That's that a is, great. That is a great date idea, guys. For anyone listening, do something that's active. Go to Paint a Ten. Go to Top Golf. Do something together. Go do that wine and painting stuff. I mean, right. that might seem a little girly, but. The girl you're with will super love that. That's really nice. Yes. I love, I like the top golf. I, yes. I've done that on, on, I did like a double date back a couple of years Isn't ago. Isn't it so much fun? It was fun. It is a fun yeah. place. I it haven't been fun. in forever. Yeah. Okay. So, well, the, tonight I'm, I'm going to, ha I got a friend in from Boston this weekend. So, we're going to go, she wants to go to Hal's uh, because, of course, she heard it from me. So, oh, we're yeah. going to go to Hal's tonight. And then Friday night, I'm actually playing cards with, with, with girlfriends. Saturday, I'm, I'm going to hit Cardio Blast in Midtown. And then I'm going to go to Huey Louie's to uh, watch the Falcons with my brand new uh, Tom Brady jersey. Oh, nice. That I got for Christmas from my Boston guy. I hope it brings you luck. Yeah. Yeah, I hope and it so, brings you luck and you well, got to take a picture. I know. Oh, I will. And, but then I'm actually going to end up back at my house watching the Patriots in the evening with my friend. Um, and then I, I don't know. I don't have anything uh, else going on so but I want to announce that um, I'm sure you've all heard this but I want to make sure that you know the first concert at SunTrust Park is going to be Billy Joel on April 28th I know. Uh, prices start at 54.50 isn't that exciting so it's gonna be super fun that's like two miles from my house 
Like, I, I'm I within yeah. walking distance. It's, oh, you're it's over there, yeah. Amazing. I every time I pass it these days, the lights are always like changing. It's so fun. Yeah, I'm yeah. excited. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a, a great place. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, Deb Bowman uh, is always on Wednesdays at the Regent Cocktail Club featuring yours truly and D Dynamo Dynamo Deb Bowman and Jacob Deaton on guitar and they're seven to ten and that's right above American Cut. DJ Vanessa Hunley is at G's tonight doing karaoke and she has Sunday Fun Day karaoke there at 6 p.m. on Sunday. Johnny Perrazzo is every night at Whiskey Mistress along with the live music. They have the Rick Seymour band at Whiskey Mistress. Go see my friend Billy Allen. Tell him Just Steph sent you. Every night there's live music at Dixie Tavern, City Winery, Venkman's, and Smith's Old Bar. And if you need all the details on that, you can check me out on my Living Atlanta calendar page on my website, JustSteph.com. Click Living Atlanta, and everything you need to know that's going on in this weekend and beyond is on that calendar. It's all meshed from all the different uh, calendars that you I can find. It. It's all pulled into it. one place, and for 99 cents a month, you get everything that you ever need to know that's going on uh, uh, in and around Atlanta and even outside the perimeter, and you get a free download of my ebook, The Only Way Is Up. Now, tonight, the Atlanta Boat Show starts at the Georgia World Congress Center. If you're a lake person, I know we have a bunch of you listeners out there, uh, you want to go over there and see, get yourself a new uh, boat. Now, also at Venkman's tonight is not annoying trivia. I don't know what that means, but I'm sure it's not annoying. And Friday, Paul Joseph is live at Sage Social Kitchen in East Cobb, and he's playing from 6 to 10. Um, there is a beer school winter series at City Winery, and uh, they are guiding you through the basics of beer in the U.S., and that's $45, and the food is great there. It's, it's great, don't you think? I love it. Yeah, it's great. So good. So, um, yeah, yeah, we've been to City Winery. We've, we've had a great time there. Oh, that is a great place. It's, it's a great I've been place. there a couple times. Now, Saturday morning is the Advanced Nutrition Workshop at Body Design uh, University from 8 to 12, and they're going to cover macronutrients, micronutrients, and all of that. Uh, you can get online on Facebook. Uh, Facebook has everything on Body Design Personal Training, and uh, that's where I go on Saturday mornings for my workout, my cardio blast. So what's going on at Bankman's? Uh, we have a chicken pick and brunch with the family portrait on uh, this is Saturday. From 1 to 3, um, family portrait is a four-piece acoustic band with Nick DeSebastian. Um, Bankman's is a great place to go. The food's um, great there. Yes, it's, it's good. very good. Um, Kenny's kickoff crew has uh, everything at Huey Louie Saturday and Sunday. I'll, I'll be, be there. there. Falcons Saturday. I'll be there in the afternoon. Okay. So come say hi. If you're, if you're out there. So, yeah, it's a lot of fun. And what about the disco skate night? How fun is this? It's a disco skate night at Avalon at 6 o'clock. Um, they're going to have you dress in your 70s inspired best. There you go. I'll wear my disco dress. It's funny. Very fun. <laughs> and then Sunday we have brunch at Davio's. Yes, brunch at every Sunday. And Delicious. Yeah, and so, yeah. And we um, do we have some of that brunch stuff on our calendar? We do. Okay, so everything, like all the different brunch uh, places are on the Living Atlanta calendar as well. So, uh, and then, of course, we have Kenny's kickoff crew in the afternoon. Yep, for, for the football. Steelers and Chiefs. And looking ahead, on the 26th with Whitney, we yes. have the Great Love Debate, and that's with Brian Howie uh, coming at all the, the way. At the punchline. Yeah, coming at the punchline. It's the Great Love Debate, and Brian's bringing it from L.A. I know, and I'm excited because we're actually going to be unveiling a new dating app that night. I can't, say, I can't say too much about okay. it now, but on the 26th, you will want Yay. to be there to hear about that. All right, so um, I've got a big shout out to my Boston Peeps birthday. Of course, my guy, Jeff Fiorentino, Anthony Lavolo. I'll see you in the Peeps, baby. Frankie and Bergamo and Lorna Vidal Palumbo. And next week, I have Rusty and I have Susan Parzielli calling in about organizing for the new year. And Brian Howe is going to be is going to be saw on that. the twenty sixth. He's going to be fun. on that morning. So we're going to talk all about love. And then I've got Nick Cellini coming in on February second to talk about the uh, about his journey and about Super Bowl. So. Uh, Check me out on Facebook I'm, uh, and Twitter at Steph Palermo. YouTube, I have my YouTube channel. Instagram, Just Steph One. And, of course, my Living Atlanta uh, calendar on my JustSteph.com page. And lots of stuff going on. I've got some new stuff happening. Know I love you all. Will you come back? Of course. Of course. I would love to come back. Yay. Yeah. We're going to have you as our official love. Uh, guru? Yeah, guru. Yes. Let's I love it. I love Yay. it. We okay. should do this all the time, guys. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no, I love you all. Wishing you love, balance, and peace. Ciao, ciao, baby. Love you. All right. We can uh, shut that down. Thank you.